Steve Little. There you go, this bought a hand jive, that's in recognition of McGull Musical Theatre Company's latest production, which is Grease. Right, now it's time to go and get yourselves a cup of tea, a bit of a biscuit, sort of rest your feet for a little bit, because coming up straight after three in a row is the one and only Mr. Braithwaite himself. Yes, it's David Muscat. Let me just give you a bit of information about him before we come on. From West End stages, feature films and television screens, David Muscat can be found entertaining audiences around the world, having recently worked with three-time Oscar-nominated director Stephen Daldry on Billy Live. David performed the role of Mr. Braithwaite, and he did it extremely well, I've got to say, in cinemas all over the globe, with a DVD Blu-ray released internationally. Stay tuned, and we'll tell you how, in a couple of weeks, you can win a signed copy of that. David has studied extensively in a variety of forms of dance, vocals, and acting. He uses those skills to entertain audiences, as well as sharing what he's learned with students all over the UK. Yeah, it's, a, it's great. A skill that we can give to other people. So that's amazing. So straight after three in a row, I'll be speaking to David Muscat. So we've got Shall We Dance from King and I, Don on the Music Box, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and Rum Tum Tugger from Cats. Three classics. Go and make yourself a cup of tea. He'll be on very, very soon. Mad about musicals. Oh, wow. Did... This is McGill Radio. There you go, there's your three in a row. I hope you've got yourselves your cup of tea and your biscuits ready, because hopefully, by the wonders of technology, I'm going to press this little yellow button here. A bit of a slider here. Hello, David. Thanks for coming on the show. How are you doing? Uh, look, not too bad. I'm trying to keep out of trouble. <laughs> right, David, so thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I've, I've been watching, I, I watch it all the time, at least twice a week. I've been watching Billy Elliot Live, and I've got to say, you are an extremely talented guy, very funny, uh, and I'm delighted that you've decided to come on the show. Now, what I've done is I, I put out a thing on my Facebook page, and I've asked people to ask a load of questions. Are you happy to answer? To those questions yeah yeah sure go for it okay fair enough uh, the only one question i want to ask you is uh, what do you think about the ashes um well it was brilliant up until about the last game <laughs> um, <laughs> but never mind so obviously uh, i mean tell people where you're from uh originally i'm from melbourne victoria melbourne victoria australia, australia yeah okay so uh, one question to be asked to ask you is what actually encouraged you to go into acting uh, when I was younger, I, I, I first started off in dance. When I was a young tacker, my my hips were turned inwards, and the, uh, mm-hmm. the, the doctor told my uh, grandma to take me to ballet class to turn them out. Yeah. So I did dance from about the age of four or five, and then when I was a bit older, a, a dance teacher of mine was doing a, um, a community theatre production of Greece, and she invited me to come down and audition. Um, that's where I got introduced to musical theatre. So from there on in, I was introduced to, to the acting side of the fence, and you know, I guess spending to about 15 years in the uh, community theatre side of the fence, so I was able to work with a lot of brilliant people and yeah. really draw, you know, work out what it was like to actually, um, you know, put something forward that wasn't just dance or just singing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's very interesting because we, where we are here in McGull in, in sunny Merseyside, we've got a, a, an amazing, and I really do say this honestly, an amazing musical theatre company. Uh, and actually, oh, strangely enough, uh, their next production is Grease. And it's, uh, oh, yeah, McGull Musical Theatre Company. People, What would you say to young people these days if they were sort of thinking about getting involved with musical theatre? Yeah, I think in the UK uh, as a whole, there's got a lot of great colleges mm. Um, where you can actually study musical theatre. I mean, back at home, we've got maybe one or two mainstream ones. Mm. Um, but over here, there's a breadth of uh, educational courses to take. Um, failing that, um, you, you know, you could go down the route that I went, which was doing the amateur musical theatre yeah. or the community musical theatre. Yeah. Um, you know, I really learned a lot from, from a lot of the people there. So uh, whether yeah. or not you're able to, to study it or do it, no, I think you've, just, you've always got to keep your finger in it and you've always got to um, keep learning. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's, that's a brilliant endorsement for community theatre. Okay, the next question I've got to ask you, oh, well, actually, one question, Karen Smith, uh, uh, she's, she's from Up in Hull. She wants to know, where do you get all your corny jokes from? <laughs> um, well, a, f- a few different sources. Some of them make me laugh, but um, some of them I, uh, come out my own noggin. So um, <laughs> it, it just goes to show the, uh, the weird and wonderful world that's in there. So. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. And uh, one serious question, now, what's your most memorable part? Um, I really uh, I had the pleasure of playing um, the dentist in Little Sh- Shop of Horrors once for a um, community theatre show back at home. Yeah. Um, and it was a very small cast, and, and along with the dentist, I got to play all the other um, bi characters that are in the show. It was really good fun. And yeah. I got to do about seven or eight different um, characters, all of them, <laughs> you know, different sort of accents and different sort of gag lines throughout. Yeah. So was, you know, you have to run around the back, get undressed, and yeah. be in a skirt, and, and come up to the lady. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so I've another question I've been asked to ask you by uh, by Jill is, what was it like actually working on Billy Elliot? 
Yeah, it, it, it's a brilliant place to work. So there's, there's some brilliant people attached to it. Always a, a, a good rotation of kids coming through and they, mm. they bring a massive amount of energy to the show. So it really makes you as, as an adult cast member, you know, sort of bring the same. So yeah. I've been fortunate enough to see some wonderful kids come in and, and you know, even Elliot Hanna, I remember when he first came into the um, yeah. to the show, he was, he was our youngest billion and he was just a... Like, he would have been about five kilos ringing wet. <laughs> he's actually coming on the show in a couple of weeks, so that's... Yeah, uh, no, brilliant. Yeah, he's a local um, Liverpool lad, Elliot, so... Yeah, I know, he's, he's a good cheeky chap. You know? Can I say, I mean, when you're actually watching it, when you watch the DVD, you can actually see the endearment between the young and the old cast. Yeah. And if you, if you watch it, you can see everybody is having fun, even though it's a quite a serious, you know, it's a, it's a serious topic. But, yeah. you know, you, you can really see that. And one of the, the next questions that have been asked, which runs on to that, is um, probably one of the biggest ones that I've been asked to ask, and obviously this is my missus. She, she can't say yes or no. <laughs> is, are the sentiments to the storyline of Billy Elliot the same in other countries? In other words, did people in Australia actually understand uh, the storyline of the miners' strike? Back, back in Oz, we, we do get quite a lot of um, UK history, get taught to us in school. You know, we do get quite a lot of UK programs mm. and, and all sorts of stuff. So the style of comedy or, or the style of writing is, is not too unfamiliar. Mm. Um, but back in Oz, it was really well received. I, I was fortunate enough to work in a, in a, for a couple of years there. And mm. um, well, you know, we still had sold out audiences for uh, all the way up until the end. So, uh, you know, it was much loved in Oz, mm. definitely. Brilliant, nice one. And the other question she's asked, which is really annoying because I, but I've got to ask it because she's the missus. Uh, do all musical lovers think they are on the West End stage when they're singing in the shower? She's actually referring to me there. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm actually trying to write a musical at the moment, which is just set in okay. a shower. Oh, no way. <laughs> So I'd like, you know, I'd like to think that anyone could be a part of it. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Do you know, I, I, I keep saying to her, you know, I sing best when I'm in the shower exactly. because I'm so more confident the because there's nobody there. <laughs> well, let's do, well, let's just do that. We'll make the whole stage a massive shower. And we'll, put, you know, we'll put four walls up, but we'll make sure that the last one people can see through, but you can't see out. Yeah. And yeah. You, you can have the leading role. <laughs> Instead of singing in the rain, singing in the shower. <laughs> exactly. That sounds really good. I like that. Okay, another uh, a couple more questions now. What was a typical yeah, day like whilst you were working on the show with Billy Elliot? What was a typical day like? Well, yeah. um, because there were so many kids coming through and, and also because everyone's got um, understanding characters and all that sort of stuff, there, there is typically a, lo a lot of rehearsals to be done. So, yeah. Um, yeah. We, you know, we were fortunate enough, fortunate enough to get maybe one or two weeks uh, of quiet weeks where we just had to do the shows only. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. we would get about maybe four or five weeks of, uh, of taking in new groups of ballet girls or a new Michael or a new Billy. Um, so it, it, it was pretty full on, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's the people there that, that, that keep it going. And, yeah. and like it's important, it is the kids there that keep you, that keep you energised. Mm. So, so a normal day would consist of basically going into the theatre, maybe doing the day's rehearsals for whoever's coming in, mm. uh, you know, a, a quick dinner break, and then, and then getting ready for the night. So, mm. um, you know, a lot of the time there, you're, you're either rehearsing the show or, or, you know, performing the show to the, to the audience. And... You know, I've got to say, the, the audiences that came down and, and saw Billy, um, you know, they were another part of the reason that, that gave us, mm. you know, the energy because they were just amazing. So, it, you know, every, I've got to thank everyone that actually came down and, and, and supported it. Yeah, it sure. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so that's uh, two more. What would be your dream role? Um, well, I'd like to take over Beverly Knight uh, in Memphis. Ooh. Um, you know, I think she's had a fair... Fair crack at it. Um, yeah. I'd like her to sort of tame over the reins to me. I, I think I'd give it a good shot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but aside from that, you know, I'd, I've always been a big big lover of uh, Robin Williams, so, you know, something like the genie in Aladdin would, would be amazing. Yeah. Um, Actually, I could see you doing that quite well. And I'm saying that quite respectfully, to be honest. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd give it a shot. But, you know, something... I, I like roles where I can have a bit of a laugh and I, and I can yeah. try to make... Uh, the audience have a bit of a laugh. So oh, yeah. definitely. And you do that really well at Billy Elliot, I've got to say. Yeah. Especially when you're dancing around as well. I've, I've got a question for you. I hope you don't mind me. What was it like with uh, Ruthie Henschel? Uh, she is amazing. She, she's brilliant. Um, the, the best thing about her is that she can crack a joke. and, and, and you know, Oh, great stuff. You know, back, backstage, she can make us laugh. And, yeah. And, you know, it's a great sense of humour. It's great like that. She wasn't someone who was too unfamiliar with trying to keep, keep yeah. the atmosphere fun. Yeah. Um, so it was, yeah, no, she was a brilliant person. Yeah, good stuff. So what, what is it, what, what are you doing now what, and, and what's planned for the future? I, I sort of took a few weeks off after Billy and just rested the old bones just for a little bit in the last three or four or five weeks. I've been doing a little bit of film work, which mm. has been great. Mm -hmm. Working for a, um, a comedy sketch program, which is going to be a pilot for TV. Oh, what's that called? Oh, can you tell us? 
I, I, I can't give out the name. No, that's fine. That's okay. Because they're still in, in, in piloting. At yeah, the that's time. fine. But, um, if that gets green lighted, that would be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm about to head back into the mix now with, with the thousands of, of other um, massively talented people So yeah. that, that are all looking for a job. So, um, you know, fingers crossed something else will come up. But uh, you Hopefully. Know, like, I'm yeah. not really... I, I, I like to just get back into something and, um, and you know, keep the creative juices flowing. Yeah, so, so, so when you, because when, it, it says on your, on your uh, website that, that you go around nationally to, to train and stuff. Any plans for that to go nationally? Like I do a bit of teaching on the side and, yeah. and I go out to schools. I, I was out in um, Salisbury a few weeks ago uh, doing a drama day for some kids out there. Mm-hmm. And, and it was brilliant. And I love working with kids. I love working with, with you know, young adults and whatnot and, and really trying to get them to take something that's just a few words on some paper and actually make it into something that is a living, breathing sort of thing. Yeah. And aside from that, I also try to draw on my previous um, history growing up as a kid and going through bullying and going through, mm. um, you know, some pretty tough times because I did have an interest in the arts mm. um, and just sort of imparting that on and, and trying to make sure that kids know that, you know, it doesn't matter if you like doing this, it's, it's, you do things that make you happy. And, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's really good fun, and, and I really enjoy doing that sort of stuff as well. That's brilliant. Well, David, it's been absolutely brilliant to have you on the show. Uh, thank you Excellent. so much for your time, and all I can say for, for the future is break a leg, mate. All right, cheers, mate. All right, thanks, you. Speak to you again soon. You're Hello. listening to McCall Radio. You have to release your inner caveman, and everything will just flow naturally.